Shumai Kroiso, hello and welcome to the Bluebird's Nest, Neath Aradair Glishon. Sponsored by Dragon Bet, Wales' finest bookmaker. For all of your up to date Cymru Premier and other sports betting markets, please visit dragonbet.co.uk. As always, please gamble aware, please gamble responsibly. Episode 19, and it's uh, a bit of a special festive episode of the Bluebird's Nest. I got three of the club's fantastic leaders joining us, two returning and one making a Nest debut. Chairman Rob Edwards, manager Tony Pennock, and first team captain Dylan Rees. Great to have you all on, gents. Good yeah. to be here. Yeah. So, Ben, we come to you first then. Um, obviously, we have spoken, plans to have you on perhaps in January to do some of the more regular Nest <coughs> questions to you. Um, it's going to be a bit of a mid season review on obviously the on and off field matters at the club with a few so far awards as voted by the Bluebirds 1899 members tonight. So looking back over the last few months, just briefly then to sort of summarise, if you want, from uh, your time joining us in pre-season, the highs of an early season uh, undefeated run, which which obviously saw us top the league for a few days at least. Then we managed to pick up some points. I think we, we perhaps we would have missed out on in uh, previous seasons, which was obviously really encouraging. A few back-to-back narrow defeats and then uh, a number of injuries started to rack up as well. But what's your uh, sort of summary so far this season? How, how do you feel the season's gone? Well, if it was a school report, I think a teacher of Dylan, like he might be probably doing things like this now this time of year, but uh, could do better is probably the report that we'd have. Um, it's been a bit stop-start, isn't it? We, you know, we've had three runs now of winning games and then, then gone on a run of losing games and... Um, and injuries haven't helped, we know that, but you know, there's been plenty of games this season where you know we should have come away with more than, than we have, and um, it's turning some of those defeats into draws, especially away from home, is something that that we, we talk about and, and, and try to implement. But uh, you know, we've just been on the wrong end of, of a few uh, a few close games, really. Um, there hasn't been any games, I don't think, where we've we've been totally dominated. Obviously, the baller after Jack getting sent off was tough, you know, we held out on half time, but. You know, once they got the second goal, you know, momentum was was with them then. You know, and they're, and they're an experienced team. But apart from that, even the TNS game, you know, we, we started really well in that one, and I think we can see that for thirty eight minutes, and then it's three 0 one minute into the second half, and that's game over against TNS. Then against most teams, it's going to be game over. But in the main, we've been in every game, and um, probably haven't capitalised on, on some of the good play that we've had and the, the games where we've dominated for spells, we haven't come away with the second goal to take the game away from them. So, um, yeah, it's been a bit frustrating, but, um, you know, hopefully we can we can start stringing another run together now as we go into the New Year period. Mm. It's, it's been full of drama, like you've just outlined there. And I think that's there's evidence now, Rob, suggesting that. There's the, a recent Cymru League's report showed us uh, over the last 12 months anyway, where right up there now with the average attendances across the, the Cymru Premier. I suppose that's testament to all the hard work going on in the community sort of side of things at the club with the initiatives such as the, the town centre club shop, etc. Obviously led by yourself with Wyndham, Marid and the other club directors involved too. That must be pleasing to hear the support the numbers are on the rise. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, I the first season I took over was the was the COVID season. We were in the Cymru South before, so it was hard to really mm. anticipate what the the demand or the the kind of yeah the the, the feeling as to to what the appetite would be to to come and watch us when we when we came back. But I think from the first game, we gave a free entry against Cardiff Met, and we had nearly nine hundred there on a Friday night, which was a incredible atmosphere. Typically, nil nil. Um, I think <laughs> you could you could have written that, but um, no, I think the support throughout the last two years has been has been really really good. Um, look, we've, we've tried to be out and visible in the in the local community. We've tried to have initiatives to bring people in into the stadium. Um, we've offered some discounted entry and, and obviously had Pure West involved and try tried to create a really good atmosphere. And I think the football over the last couple of years has, particularly majority of the games, has been has been really good to watch. And yeah, I think. I think we're third in the the average the average home attendances, which is which is huge, and we've we've more than doubled what what the average attendances were when we we're in the Cymru South. So that's really pleasing, and it's a sign of obviously the work we've done and and 
the kind of bond we've created with with the town and the fans. We've got our, our own little batch of ultras now as well who uh, who travel away, and that's that's great to see. I think Pennebon, obviously, we wanted to re- re- reward the fans after supporting us through through such a good start to the season. I think we took 50, 55 up to Pennebon, which I think for this division is is unheard of. So, um, no, it's been really pleasing, and, and hopefully we'll... Uh, We'll have a good end to the season and give them something to cheer about t- towards um, April, May. But no, I think we've played some good stuff and we've given them some some good days out. And hopefully they'll yeah they'll keep coming back. Excellent. And I suppose sticking with the off field uh, sort of playing staff, coaching staff, some well established Cymru League players joined us in the summer, but a number of off field appointments as well. Ashley Hopkins joined you know sort of head of coaching role, so fronting up the academy. Wyndham's role became full-time and, well, there's another recruitment drive now ongoing for the general manager of the club position. What will all this mean going forward? I think I don't think people realise what, what the demand is now of the of the Cymru Prem in terms of what, what needs to be done. Um, especially as a club, we've got ambitions to go into towards the full-time, towards the full-time spectrum. Um, it, look, even a a small club like ourselves is there's a huge amount behind the scenes that it takes to run it. Obviously, we've been a funded academy. We need a full time head of coaching. I think Ash has come in and hit the ground running and done a brilliant job so far. He took over from all the good work that that Waggy done through the through the previous season. Um, and I think for us to be competitive on the pitch, we need a lot in place off the pitch as well. I, don't, I just don't think I think the club's a very different club and the league's a very different league to what it was two or three years ago and I think it's trying to raise that understanding of what actually goes into getting a game on to keeping the club operating um, and I, I can't put a more I can't put a bigger emphasis on how important it is to have a good a, a good back office team you've seen it with even clubs like Connors Key and having 18 points deducted you've seen so many clubs kicked out of, of cup tournaments this season there's there's, there's a lot to uh, there's a lot to take into account and I think when we want to go into and into a full-time club over the next few years and take the club forward it, you need to have that you need to have that balance and obviously every appointment we make off the pitch obviously we're recruiting for a general manager at the moment which is I think every club in this division needs 100% um, obviously Wyndham's role moving into more of a commercial partnerships role these are all investments that these these will enable us to to bring more fans into the ground which obviously generates revenue, increased partnerships, commercial sponsorships, hospitality. This all brings money back into the club. So it's all part of making the club sustainable. You need to make that investment off the field to to in turn generate that revenue back. It's not just a case of, of bringing bodies in because it's what we feel we need. It's we, we do need it because of the demands of running a club like this day to day, but it, it's all um, hopefully an investment to to bring additional revenue and success back into the club over the next two or three years. Exciting times ahead then, I suppose. And uh, look forward to hearing that appointment in the, hopefully in the new year now then. Um, let's come on to these mid-season so far awards. As I mentioned, they all being shortlisted and voted by the, the members, the Bluebirds 1899 members. Again, re-emphasising, I suppose, the, the club's own vision to become one of the most fan-centric clubs, certainly here in Wales, but as, uh, well, across the footballing world. Um, Delilah, I'm going to come to you first for your sort of um, inside eye in the change room. The first award is the Unsung Hero of the Season. This, I suppose, could have been given to to any of the, of the players for all the different reasons. There's a few experienced boys alongside you in the changing room. I'm sure probably good to have around after wins and losses for, for various reasons. Um, some doing their, their utmost to help their, their fellow players out, perhaps when they're on the bench themselves, and you know many who've gone above and beyond. But in your role as well, in your perspective as a skipper, who, who's been good to have in the camp so far this season? Uh, I think I think Corey Sheppy, he's, um he's classed all around the place. Him and uh, the fellow Cardiff Car School they've got going on. They're just always cracking jokes and <laughs> and trying to make light of every situation. So. Definitely those boys. I think they've, they've made such a difference. Obviously, Shep's been with us for a while now, but Jamie, Reese come in. Uh, Idzi coming back. And then obviously there's Pats in there as well. Uh, but then a couple of the young boys like Yoan and Ryan, you know, they're, even though they're the Dillers of Brush, they just make the room, make the room shine a bit because they're just so funny together. Honestly, they come, they come as a pair. You never see them anywhere on their own. So 
I just think having a good mix, we've got such we have got such a mix of like experience and youth in the in the changing room, and I do think we we've, we've gelled well um, over the past year or two, and all the all the additions we've made. I've like slotted straight in. Like I've known like Jamie for, and Reese for a long time, so I think I think that's helped. But honestly, I think I think we've clicked well as a group um, up to this point. Um, hopefully, then we can use that just to kick on a bit further now in the in the next stage of the season. You've mentioned a few of the players who did receive votes uh, by the members themselves, but I can confirm the winner is in fact Reese Abrusesi. Dave, as he's known to many of the the eighteen ninety nine members. Like you said, he's had a great impact, obviously, both on and off the field. Ben, what's he been like since joining us? Yeah, Abu's been uh, excellent, I'll be honest. Um, he's been very consistent alongside Dylan. Dylan and Abu, for me, have, they've played every every game. Dylan's obviously missed the last couple. Um, but their level of consistency during tough games as well has, has helped us out massively. And uh, Abu's been a great addition to the squad this year. Yeah, congratulations yeah. to Dave then. Uh, the next one, newcomer of the season, so potentially someone who's come through from within the club ranks the, through the academy system. Come to you again on pens. We mentioned the injuries. Uh, some of these guys who've probably played more minutes than you probably imagined back in the summer. How, how have the, the young guns done coming into the first team setup? Yeah, we, you know, we've had several of the boys who've been on the bench and travelled with us this year. Um Yori started four games and come on sub five times in the league. Um, you know, every time Yori plays, he's learning, and you know when he's playing again with the experienced boys at the back, that can only benefit him. Um, he's playing on the left side as well, being a right foot. That's not easy for whoever does that job for me. But Yori's done excellent, and he's somebody that um, you know he's getting better and better every time he plays and trains. And and young Harry, obviously Harry started six games now, started six, and he's come on four times as well. So if, you know. If we talked about that at the start of the season, he wasn't even somebody that was in my squad. You know, when I first came, I had my the list of names, and you know, there was there was uh, Yori, Dan who's moved on now, uh, Lucas, a young Josh Grace, another one who's moved on to university. But Harry wasn't in around it until we we trained a couple of times, and I watched the the development training and, and just caught the eyes straight away. Really, um, he's come in, and you know, the the senior boys have, have made him really welcome and looked after him. And I'm sure they talk to him all the time. But, you know, from what I see, they do. And he's a type of kid who, who just wants to learn. You know, he asks questions all the time. He comes and talks to me after every game. And what should I have done there? What can I do here? And I think at the minute, we've just got to leave Harry go. Like, you know, he's 16. I don't want to put too much pressure on the kid. He's in the Welsh Colleges squad. Him and Lucas have been away again today with the Welsh schools for two days. So the demands on, on the youngsters is tough. So, we, you know, we've got to look after them as much as we, we need them and want them to play. For us, we've got to be uh, mindful how young they are and um, trying to help their development by not um, overplaying them as well. Yeah, Which is tough at times, especially when, when we want them and because they've they've done so well for us. Yeah, and it's exactly you've, you've summed it up perfectly. I think um, Yori did, in fact, receive a number of votes, but yeah, you know, sort of majority of them did go to young Harry. So congratulations, newcomer of the season. Rob, you must be really pleased. You know what what Penz has just outlined there, the the conveyor belt of young talent that's coming through. Yeah, definitely. I think you look at um, obviously any successful club, particularly at this at this level and where we are, you need a um, a certain number of young players coming through. Um, I think the club has had history of of that. You look at Ben Fawcett, Jack Wilson, Alaric Jones. These players have all come through in in recent years, amongst others. Um, but no, like, as as Tony said, I mean, I sat down with Tony when we when he took over, and, and Harry wasn't even a, a consideration. I'd probably seen him a handful of times, but you see the way he's come in and applied himself and, and impacted games. I think particularly at Bristol away when we, we we weren't great in the in the first half, he came on and, and grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck. And for a for a sixteen year old boy, that was that was unbelievable to see. And I think um, there's that fine line of playing with that freedom and lack of pressure and letting him express himself to. So obviously, the more he's involved and 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 the bigger games we we come up with over the next sort of few months is 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 going to put that pressure on him. It's good to see how he how he handles it. But no, and, and Yuri as well. Um, I remember um, sitting sitting behind Yuri on the bench at Airbus away last season when we were we were down to bare bones, and there was there was a few kids there and they looked like rabbit in headlights. And, and Yuri came on and look, he'd done a job for us for for 50, 60 minutes. But seeing where he is now to 
to where he is then in terms of confidence, maturity, and and being able to uh, yeah play play regular minutes and, and and be be a good addition for us is is really good to see as well. So no, we're we're really lucky and well, there's there's players throughout the season so far that have, that have made kind of sub appearances and, and been involved in and around the squad, and I think it's really really good to see. Excellent. Okay, then next one up uh, is goal of the season so far. Now, uh, again, this was narrowed down to just five goals, each of the goal of the month winners, I believe, across the, the club's social media. Um, let, let's take a look at those then before we discuss these. Abruzzisi and Cotti and Bailey Laura Kai Wilson turn it Bailey Laura and Kira Donahew I'm a Jack Wilson with the door the whole fort and Gavartal Ketik Trosteg minute with the main dinner I'll Hannah have an ass Wilson and we he done it Bailey Laura Kira Dion Donahew as he's throw Bailey he be up he just hit bets in a goal Jamie Veal at our with Mike Gick, Thai, Vaunir Kurtzbach, George Hughes and Cleario Asterton, and Taklis up. Oh, my darling, not a bail. Well, Tatem Boy, Tarheno Breed, Rob Blazer, Penyard, Dulan Reese, Aaron Volley, Am Gol, Gan Captain Hulford, Dulan Reese, or Am the Funnor, and Whip your bail or Awir Ir Cornelisa. Quich. Veal, dros y gic, Jamie Veal! Cic rydd berffaith gan Jamie Veal. Mae'n ddwy i hwlffordd ar ôl hanner awr. Do a them and score your goal, your symbol. My and score your goal, your hybrid. Five fantastic goals that we've just seen there. Then, uh, Della, are you picking your own goal out of those as the winner? Hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> Is, that's, that's surely one of the longest range goals you've scored yourself. Uh, yeah, I scored one for Met a, a few years ago against Flint, and I just whacked it because I put a crap cross in, and I just whacked in it. We ended up going in, so similar to that. I ended up putting a header in, it got headed out, so I thought, you know what, just just let rip and I ended up going in. Are we agreeing with that, Pens? What, what do you think? Who, who should uh, be the winner there? No, some good goals there, but yeah, technically, that was an excellent uh, excellent goal, so I'm going to go with Dylan, yeah. Okay. Rob? Yeah, I think it's one of those, um, the old Soccer AM days when I think Tim Lovejoy said it's only Ray Parler. And he's <laughs> on the corner against Chelsea, so I, I actually looked away. As soon as it came out, I was like, I was only Dylan. <laughs> and next minute, he it in the bottom corner. He had, I don't think he had any idea what to do once he scored it. But no, what a hit. No, it was completely, uh, completely unexpected, but yeah, much needed. Well, I suppose it comes as uh, unsurprisingly then. Dylan, you are, have actually won the <laughs> one of the season so far award. You were that a number is. of votes ahead of the others. But to be fair, there's, there is some crackers there. It could have been any. Yeah. After the goal, then uh, you you seem to run to the same corner end of the ground. You you've scored a couple of times now. Yeah. A bit of uh, an way how to celebrate. I think doesn't happen very often, does it? So whenever it does happen, I kind of just run off into a, into a random direction and <laughs> and then I wait for the boys to catch me up. Yeah, love it. More of that in uh, in January onwards, then please. Moment of the season now then, uh, again, could have been picked from many moments that have happened so far, uh, positive and negative. Let's take a look at some of them. Abruzzese in any tier dal out of the Matt Henry Jones, the Chris Jordan, Henry, that's still Ken Jordan, Davis. I get a dig when it's a weather to Matt, are all the bombs for Hulk for him in that blind. A Christ Shadden, Berfaith Gan Jones, a Jordan Davis, and a Gori Gubri Amatumar. Now, a Wilson, Wilson, a big like Adel Bell. Taco Cass, a Smith for now. 
Jack Wilson, Cali Hello, the Araka. Full for a goal of Antestano. A kick Cornell. Take at Jenkins and Penyad. Oh, and Cali Clirio. Oh, man, a Gavle. He had Brutsisi. And man, Cali Lurio. And the court cost me a Mr. Griffith. Dima here. And point your at a smot in. A Penyad, Gradio, and Jenkins. I do incredibly my Akpa Akpro. Oh, then a van, Arthe, Ristroy. And then a Abrutsisi. Well, Ben Hughes, Anthony Stevens, I went in Harry Owen, Trichanigi Gumro, I Loriovo. Jordan Davis, or Smotin, Adana Chi, Pimed Goal, Tamori, Jordan Davis, Hulford, Arablain, and Erbin Deg, Dina Flint. Veal, Drosagek, Jamie Veal! Kick Reed, Berfaith, Gan Jamie Veal, Mind Thui, I Hulford, and all Hannah Hour. Do I them and score your goal a symbol? My and score your goal a hybrid. Obviously, Jordan's header that, that broke the deadlock there late on in the season opener. Jack's red card, the much talked about Jack's red card. Jordan's crucial penalty up there in Flint to take what was a big three points on the road that day. And Vidi's free kick just recently under the lights. Depends when you, when you look back at the last few months then, what, what moments stand out for you? It's got to be the Flint one for me. Um... For the game, Newtown had kicked off early, so we dropped into the bottom two at, uh, before we'd kicked off at Flint. Um, so we knew the position that we'd found ourselves. Our own fault, our own doing, we know that. And um, I thought the boys, it, listen, it wasn't the best game ever away at Flint. Two teams who were having a tough time and cancelled each other out. But um, you know, we see what Abu does for the goal. It comes off a Jenks header from a corner, then it, it drops to Abu. Um, and I just think us winning one 0 that day was was a was a big turning point. You know, we went on to win the next three then, but um, which we need to get get going again. But um, yeah, at the time, like I said, we put ourselves in a bad position, and um, the boys showed good um, great attitude to to come through that day and and get the three points on the clean sheet. Yeah, it was a pressure part of a day again. Like you mentioned, that the Newton result had already come through, and for me, it probably would get my vote as well. But that's for perhaps post-match celebrations more so than the, the goal itself. Um, however, it hasn't taken the win in this one. It's actually gone to Jack's red card as the moment of the season so far. Um, Rob, there was a bit of a backlash following that, particularly across Twitter. W- what are your thoughts on uh, what happened that day and perhaps what followed on in the in the coming weeks afterwards? Yeah, well, I think I had, I had a bit of yeah, I had a bit of a bit of a meltdown that day. I think you know. It, it, Sort of a, the pressure and uh, uh, c- kind of continuous reoccurrences hit a bit of a hit a bit of a buffer that day, and I had a bit of a bit of an outburst, which I regret to some extent in terms of how I uh, how I worded. But I think what what came off the back of it, I think, was really was really positive. Um, I think what I think the biggest thing was it was obviously an incorrect decision, and it was it was rightly overturned. And I think there was a number over that period affecting other clubs that that would which is way off what what it needs to be at this sort of level. And it doesn't paint a very good picture of, of the league. And not from my point of view, obviously with Tony as well and, and the players, if, you, if you're in a bad run of form, we, we get the stick. And, and I think it's, it's only fair that, that everyone should be, should be accountable in this sport. And I, I don't feel there was a level that everything was. I think what, what's come off the back of it has been really positive after, obviously, I think I've had a row with every referee in the United Kingdom in, in the week that preceded. Um, but you look at, um, I think, what Scorio sent out two or three weeks after, where I think it was Dean John, um, it, it, either Dean John or another experienced referee, they looked at some of these decisions and they gave their their opinion. Look, yes, it's a wrong decision, but this is why he may have given it, or it was just the referees had a shocker, or it's actually the right decision, and, and this is why he's done it. I think having that accountability first and foremost to make sure that people are aware that yes they've made a wrong decision and these are the repercussions off of it but also educating people on on the rules of the game and why referees give certain decisions I think the more they can do that will be much more beneficial to the league and add so much more credibility but no, in that moment I think we 
speaking to Tony and Waggy after the game. And I think there was a real sense that we could have gone out and won that game. And I think the way we started it was was outstanding. Probably one of the best 10, 15, 20 minutes of the season. And you could sense we were really up for that. And and, and we had them against the wall and, and the points were ours. And just to, to have it taken away by that sort of decision, who knows, Bella, a, a top side, you could have, they, we could have gone and lost the game two or three, one with 11 men. You don't know, but at that moment, it was, it was a real... Um, Real kick of the teeth, I think, for all of us, based on how we started that game, and look, I think emotions got the better of of some of us, none, none more so than me. But I think off the back of it has has created a lot of positive conversation. Um, so I agree, look, it was it was, a, it was a big moment of the season for for many reasons, and fortunately, we kicked on off the back of that with some good, not necessarily the best performances, but we, we had a good run of form after that. So it was definitely a, a pivotal moment of the season. Yeah, but, but like you said, there, there has been a lot of positives to come out of it. I think Lee Evans, I think it is, the, the head of referees who, who did the, the video, I thought that was excellent. It was a really fascinating watch. Um, obviously, off the back of that, we had Martin Jones on the next episode who you know spoke about his own journey into the referee in, in, in Pembrokeshire. Um, he uh, encouraged me, I suppose, to go and do the referees course myself, which I have done recently. And again, it was fascinating to go through that process. And it's it's brought around. And last week, I spoke to Kian Devine from that football drawing. At 15, he's even considering sort of taking up the whistle and having a look. So, you know, I suppose off the back of a couple of negatives, a lot of positives come out of it too. Um, okay, moving on then. The signing of the season. Dels, you've, you've summed up a lot of the, the characters in the dressing room. But it was, you know, lo- looking back at the end of the season, a big transitional period in the summer. Um, yeah. many players moved on many influential players from last season moved on but many new faces joined us some you, you sort of you mentioned you knew before but how have you found that um, the players embracing the club's vision and the sort of ambitions that the club hold yeah I think I think the players you signed uh, are all similar they all like they all like playing playing football like passing the ball and, and being technical um, I think I think it's it's resonated well within the team. I think we've all we all have an idea of, of the way we want to play and the philosophy that we're trying to implement on the pitch. Um, everyone's everyone's got clear objectives and they know their roles in the games. It's just executing them, like Tony said earlier, consistently. Um, but yeah, I think I think Reese has been outstanding for us. You know, he is he is Mister Consistency every game. He's those crazy dribbles and driving runs he goes on. It, it gets us up the pitch. You know, no end of time. So um, I, yeah, I'll have to put it down to Reese for me. Yeah, Rob, who would your vote go on, on this one? Yeah, I'd agree. I think I, I agree with Tony as well. I think the skipper and and Reese have been the most consistent players all season. I think in terms of new signing, obviously, I think Reese has come in and made a made a massive difference. I kind of feel for him sometimes in the run that he makes down wide as always coming across. I think he's probably deserves two or three more assists than he's got. Mm. Um, but no, I think you, you look at him; he's he's a, a seven out of ten as a minimum every week, even in in some of our kind of, I won't say worse performances, but when we're not quite up to it, I think he's he's still one that's trying to create something for us. So, um, no, I think, hands down for me, I think he's been, been one of the best additions. OK, well, it's actually ended in a tie and it's slightly controversial because uh, who, obviously, Abu, you've mentioned there, rightly so, uh, has finished joint first. Congratulations, Dave. Um, but also a player who joined on loan in January who officially became a full-time Bluebird in the summer, Jordan Davis, who was tied uh, at the top of the votes from the members. So, congratulations. Two very different characters there, Pens. What are, what are they both like to manage? Totally different, as you just said, which you'd yeah. expect. Abu, very quiet. He doesn't say much in front of me, whether he does in the dress, no. But as Dill mentioned, that, that Cardiff Valley car school that they'll come down in is, uh, is quite entertaining at times, along with the, the two Swansea boys. Um, uh, and Jordan, um, how can I how can I explain <laughs> Jordan? Um, <laughs> it's interesting, put it that way. <laughs> Complex character, uh, very talented lad. I think we all know that, and um, yeah, he, he can be uh, he can be a challenge at times. <laughs> 
more of the same from them both then in the new year moving on. Uh, listen, um, if, he's, if, he's, if he scores another 10, then I'll, I'll gladly accept the challenge. <laughs> I'm not sure that when he scores. And, and I have to be fair to him, same as Dylan. Jordan's played in several positions for us this year out of, out of necessity, really. Same as Dill, and they just get on with it and, and do the job. Dylan doesn't mourn. Jordan might have a little whinge up at me now and then. <laughs> Especially one position which isn't his favourite, but he does it for the team and he he understands why, why he's asked to do it. And if I didn't yeah. think he could do it, I wouldn't ask him to do it. But because of the talent that he's got and uh, the ability, he's somebody that is is unfortunate to have to play a number of positions. Okay, then player of the season, the final one now. The player of the season so far, um, Rob. You've watched, I think, every minute of the game. You're kicking every ball from. Whether it be on the touchline, whether you're obviously at home in London, or I think there's been a couple of times you've been abroad with work and you're watching in the middle of the night. Um, a number of sort of uh, contenders for this, but who, who would be your player of the season so far? Uh, I think again, it's got to be between the skipper and, and Reese. I'd, I'd struggle to uh, to separate them to be honest. I think they both do different roles. Obviously, skipper's solid and. Good communicator and gets the team gets the team going. Leads from the front. Um, Reese obviously exciting going forward and just adds something different that we probably haven't had for for the last season or two that I've that I've been in charge. But I think it'd be unfair to to separate them. But mm. yeah, I think those two have been the the, the 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 good the better performers of us this season. Well, the the members themselves have managed to separate them, uh, and just by two votes. Um, you've probably been never been asked to do an acceptance speech before, Del. But congratulations, <laughs> player uh, of the season so far, as voted okay. by the members. Uh, yeah, and, and I must say, much warranted to all the names that have been thrown in the mix there. But you, you really have been a, a warrior at the back there, leading the way. Um, go for the rest of the season, more of the same. I'm assuming you're you're looking for. Yeah, um, hopefully, obviously, great to hear that. But the, the supporters are. Uh, uh, Rate my performances so far this season, which is which is great. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a collective, I guess. Um, like you obviously can't do anything without the rest of the boys. Um, but yeah, for, as for the rest of the season, just hopefully sort sort this shoulder injury out as soon as I can. I'm working working hard with Tristan um, and the doctor, um, just try and get it sorted as quick as as quick as possible. And then hopefully, yeah, just come back at the ground running and and hopefully pick up some some well well need, well needed results. Excellent. That sort of brings us full circle and back to the present day. We have got Aberystwyth coming to the Augie Bridge Meadow tomorrow night, Friday 23rd of December, 7.30pm kickoff. Depends, as Dylan just said, that you've got a number of first-teamers who are still out of action, perhaps. How have prepara preparations been towards what's a, a very busy, festive period in front of us? Yeah, it's not been easy. It's not with the injuries we have. You know, it's only so many things you can do in training then. Even last week with the weather, you know, the pitch was frozen on the Wednesday, so we had to move to the Thursday, and even the artificial was frozen on Thursday night. So um, there wasn't a lot we could do. Um, but again, hopefully now we might have some back for Friday night and um, be able to give a good account of ourselves. But no matter who's on the pitch, then the boys will understand what, what's needed of them. And, you know, we, we didn't perform an average with that was, that was, I thought, our most disappointing night of the season for me in the league and um, we certainly need to turn up on Friday and um, and show people who were there that night that that's not the real uh, half of West County and um, we show them the real team on, on Friday night Excellent, looking forward to that Rob, I'm going to leave you with the, the final words before we wrap up then uh, Is there anything specific on your uh, list of Santa this Christmas? What's, uh, what's the wish list for 2023? <laughs> I mean, nine points in the immediate um, yeah. immediate future would be good. Um, I think, look, top top six is going to be going to be tough, but we've got we've got winnable games in front of us to to be able to to be in with a fighting chance. And look, if not, we have to finish in that seventh place. I think we're we're a team more than good enough on our day to be in that top six places. If it's not to be, we have to make sure we we win that league and give ourselves a chance in the. In the playoffs, I think it's what we all want. I think it's what we all expect as a minimum to be, to be in with a shout of that European playoff. Um, I think you look at our results against the teams in that kind of bottom five or six, and they've been they've been mostly, mostly pretty good. We've given some of the better teams a run for their money on their day, so we know we're more than capable of it. So, 
yeah, look, I think just pick up as many points as we can. If it gets us in the top six in the next five, six games, then all well and good and, and mission accomplished and we can have a, a lot of fun in the last three months. If not, we have to keep working hard and make sure we win our win our split and, and, and give ourselves an opportunity of, of getting into that European place. And there's no reason why why we can't. Obviously, we've, we've got January coming up. Tony's inherited a squad of players which are, are of a, a certain standard that we, we know was, was good enough, but ultimately he's adopted a set of players that that weren't necessarily his. And I'm not saying there's necessarily going to be wholesale changes coming in January, but there's an opportunity to, to freshen things up, to, to boost the squad and and bring players in if we need to that that can uh, that can suit what we want to do for the second half of the season. But um, no, I think a wish list and is is also a realistic list, I would say. And 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 finishing the season as strong as possible and being right up there with a shout of of qualifying would be would be wanted and and expected, I would say. Excellent. Well, that brings us to a close. And thanks to the three of you for joining us, uh, and I suppose to all the the members who got involved with the the so far awards. Congratulations again to all those winners. Uh, plenty more of those goals, particularly from you, Dills, please, in, in phase two of the season. Uh, we'll be back now then after the new year for more Bluebird's Nest conversations. Uh, but for now, Nadali Clowen, Merry Christmas. And uh, here's to a happy, successful 2023. Cheers, right. <laughs>